is it worth it to get a college degree in general? I would definitely still recommend going the self-taught route. See, that's where I disagree with you. Okay. It got me my first job, which got me my subsequent jobs. And I was like, man, the day that I earn six figures, all my problems will be solved. When you are about to get a new job, you could be really excited, but you're going to lose that job no matter how well you do. Entertain us a little. What's some <laughs> bad stuff that happens as a data scientist? Yeah, I've dealt with... Today we are diving into the world of data science. How do you get into it? What salaries can you expect in it? What are the interview processes like? What are projects that you can expect in it? And lastly, what are some not so good things about this field? We're gonna be spilling all the tea. I have Megan here today, a person who's been in the data science field for a couple years now. Can you talk to us about your origin story, how you got in? Absolutely. I did not study anything related to data when I was in college. I attended the University of Virginia studying finance, left college, because became a financial analyst at a big four consulting firm, stayed there for two years. But then at the end of the two years, I was super burnt out and realized that I did not give a crap about <laughs> finance. So I was like, you know, I've heard a lot about working in tech, like seems like you can make a lot of money and it's a very exciting lifestyle. And I was like, that's the only technical skills I, I guess I have. And I was like, you know, I have nothing to lose. Let's pursue that route. That was about like four years ago when I when I made that switch. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really glad that I did that because finance was not the one for me. So given that, was it easy to get opportunities given that you only had one course, not like internships, years of experience or anything like that? It was unbelievably difficult probably no that was absolutely my longest job search mm -hmm. well because you know when you're when you're in school and you go to a pretty okay university you have companies that actively recruit from your schools as i'm sure yeah. you're aware of at georgia tech right and so a lot of companies came to the university of virginia to recruit for finance roles so when i was in school i never had any issues getting yeah. a job it was when i made that pivot from finance into data analytics where i was like okay this is my first real like adult job search mm -hmm where nobody's holding my hand. I don't have any counselors telling me like how to apply for roles, me, myself, and LinkedIn. It took me about five months to land my job as a, as a data analyst because I knew nobody in, in the field. I didn't have any connections, didn't have any projects, didn't know where to begin. I think like the first one or two months was me just like getting my bearings and figuring yeah. out what even is data analytics. But slowly during that five month period, learned from my mistakes, figured out how to tailor my resume to, to job postings, how to beef up my, my projects and how to get more connections and referrals by having coffee chats. And so by the end of the five months, became a data analyst at another consulting firm. Yeah. And that was like my first foray into data. Wow. So you grinded those five months. Yeah, th yeah. that was like the <laughs> toughest five months of my yeah. life. So you went from finance to data analytics to data science, yes. right? Yeah. Obviously a very interesting question. Do you mind sharing your compensation throughout this journey? Yeah, I remember every single number because I mean, from day one, I remember being like, I want six figures so badly and like yeah. and I was like man the day that I, I earn six figures all my problems will be solved and so my first job out of college I made 70k I was like I'm working at a big four company like shouldn't I be earning more during my two years there had one promotion got to 75k no bonuses no variable oh commission. so just straight base it else. was just okay. base so by the time I left that job I made 75k jumped to my data analyst role making 90k stayed there for nine months by the time I left I made 95k and you know that elusive six figures, six figures. you're like, just about like, there oh, I'm yeah. five. like you could have given me a 10k bonus so when I left my data analyst role I became a data scientist afterward at a small data startup mm -hmm. and at that role I made 115k and during my time there I got a 10k promotion so by the time I left that role I, w I was making 125 so at this point, when you hit the 125 mark, how many years of experience did you have at that point? Exactly two years of experience uh, wow. by the end uh, of my time as a data scientist. Okay. And then after that, I landed at my current job at DeepNote, where I am a developer advocate, where I advocate on behalf of the developers of our product. And our product is a data science notebook, right? So mm -hmm. the developers are data scientists. Yeah. So I get to work with people who were like me in the prior role. I would get to work with data scientists, figure out what makes them tick and how to serve them content and resources so that they can engage with our tool better. So, so like a content creator for data science? It's like, it's literally exactly that. <laughs> that fits my skill sets yeah. a lot more than just straight data science because I love content creation just yeah. like you. Over 100,000 followers on LinkedIn. Yeah. That's right, 107K <laughs> and 800 or something like that. Uh -huh. But who's counting? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I love content creation. So, mm. and I get to work in 
in data science still, kind of the best of both worlds. I make 200K, 185 is from my, my role at Deep Note. The rest of my income comes from content creation and things like that. I always encourage people to like explore not just different roles within tech, but within each of those roles, there are sub roles to it yeah. where you can really maximize your earning potential. Given that you have all these experiences, what are some skills that enabled you to get these experiences? Yeah, biggest thing was my data analysis skills. So that includes data manipulation and exploratory data analysis skills that I, I brought over with me from my days as a data analyst. On top of that, there's math skills. So that includes statistics, linear algebra, singular, multivariate calculus, fancy things like that, that may not come up during the job, but definitely during interviews. And then on top of that, machine learning libraries and being able to tie all this together in real world projects. What are like the central coding languages? Big ones are Python and SQL. And then if your team prefers R, then that will take the place of Python instead. But mm -hmm. Any combination Any of those libraries three. in particular? Yeah, big ones for data manipulation and cleaning um, include NumPy, Pandas, those are the big ones. And then for visualizing your data, Matplotlib, Plotly, Seaborn, those are the big ones. Yeah, and Scikit-learn for machine learning? You know it. Yeah, yeah, that's a popular machine learning library. So you acquire all these skills. When you go to apply for the job, obviously there's an interview process. What's that like for data scientists? First, you have your typical recruiter screen to make sure that you meet the basic qualifications. And then usually it goes straight into the technical screen to make sure that everybody's on the same level in terms of like coding skills. So mm -hmm. that will usually look like a combination of SQL and Python, but really good interviewers will ask you like, hey, would you prefer Python or R? Oh, and okay. you can specify that way because the testing software that they use, like you can just choose the language. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they might go in more in depth into like scenario questions to ask you about the projects that you've done, hypothetical questions of like, hey, how would you handle like this outlier in the data? Mm -hmm. So that you, they can test your critical thinking and like also the technical skills of statistics. Is it math. a business case study they give you? Yeah, sometimes. I have seen that being tied into the coding rounds where if it's a take home test, mm -hmm. I've been given take home and on the spot coding test yeah. where like the business case is something you take home and you have to answer it with Python code that you submit. Gotcha. Okay. So for software engineering, I'm sure you probably heard of it. It's all about lead code, data structures, and oh, algorithms, yes. almost as if you can expect what you're going to get out of it. Uh, mm. Is it like that for... Yeah. So there is a component of like leak code questions being asked, especially if you're doing on the spot coding. Mm -hmm. But I would imagine like that part for data scientists is not nearly as extensive as for software engineers. Mm -hmm. In that way, I'm so jealous that like there's just this one place where you can crank it all out. For data scientists, it's like you're tested on so many different things and you can't just go to one place to, to get it. But I think that there are a lot more coding platforms coming out now mm -hmm. that are trying to do what Leap Code does, but specifically for data scientists. So mm -hmm. things like Data Lemur, Strata Scratch, Hacker Rank, those are some of the ones that I used. Gotcha. And if you want help in learning some data science skills, such as R, SQL, Python, Megan here has a LinkedIn learning course that you guys should check out, link in the description. Definitely check that one out. It's Python versus R versus SQL. So if you don't know where to begin with all three of those, I break it down for you. So one big important thing that I always tell people is before you have formal work experience, experience, projects are your experiences that you can throw on your resumes. What is it like for a data scientist? Do you have any project ideas for people who are watching? Yeah, I like the idea of the web app because I think that takes your data science projects to the next level. Like mm -hmm. you're not just presenting a bunch of code to like your interviewer. They don't care about your code. Yeah. They care about what you can do with it. So if you built a project that you have deployed into a web app and like you can show them in a nice polished interface, that just makes your project stand out so much more because your, your interviewers can interact with it. You could do projects like like term prediction, stock price prediction, house price prediction. Those are the pretty basic ones. But another way to make them stand out is if you tie the projects to something you actually care about. So yeah. like if you're doing like a house price prediction analysis and like you're not even looking for houses, what does that matter to mm -hmm. you or to the interviewer, right? You want to do something that is actually useful to you. So some of the projects that I did when I was first starting out was I power lift. Mm -hmm. And so I like scraped a bunch of data from this database of scores from powerlifting competitions and tried to use that to 
to like predict whether an athlete would make or fail their next attempt. Another one was LinkedIn engagement prediction. It would take in things like the length of the post, how many emojis the post had, the topic of the post, and try to predict how many likes it would get. So mm, these are projects that I was like, I actually care about this. So I'm going to put all of my effort into building it. Mm -hmm. And that way I talk more passionately about it to my interviewers. Yeah. At the end of the day, you need something that's impactful that you can talk really well about in your interviews. Now, I kind of want to pivot over to a big debate in like the whole tech field is, is it worth it to get computer science or just a college degree in general? Or can you do self-taught route or boot camp certifications? What do you say about that? I'm biased because I went the self-taught route. So I say it's totally possible without a degree. And also, I actually considered getting my master's and I took all the prerequisite courses to start enrolling for that master's. Mm. And then I got my job in data science and I was like, okay, I don't need to take any of those anymore. So, so like I have a pretty strong data point right there. Well, so what you said is it's possible but would you recommend it? Yes, I would because I was resource constrained. Mm -hmm. And so like for me as a full-time working adult, I was like, I don't have the time to take these courses as a part-time student and also working full-time. Mm -hmm. And also I didn't have the money to just give up working and pursue it full-time. And so for those reasons, I would definitely still recommend going the self-taught route. See, that's where I disagree with you because okay. I feel like my degree has helped me so much okay. in terms of not just like the education side, but mm -hmm. the career opportunities, the career fairs, okay. the resources research opportunities. There's just so much more at like a university. Now, the thing is, you also did have a degree like yep. at, at the backing of it, uh, although it wasn't directly applicable. Right. Not having a degree like a 17 year old kid. Okay, I see. Deciding to not go to a mm. degree. I feel like that's a little different. It's tricky. Like I, I do think you should have at least an undergraduate degree, mm -hmm. but plenty of people these days are even of the opinion that like, hey, you don't even need that to yeah. break into tech. And I think that's definitely more the case that you can get a job in tech without a degree compared to like finance or consulting, those things are very pedigree based, whereas tech is ability based. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> but I would still say like, if you are a 17 year old kid and you're like, hey, should I go to college or should I not? Go to college, <laughs> go get that undergraduate degree. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, it opens doors for relationships and connections that you make at the school, especially if your school is well known. It's like I know some companies who will only hire from certain schools. Right. Because they have like a top 10 list that they only want from. You know. Right, yeah. And then also, even though my degree was not in data science, having the UVA name on my resume, helps out. it still helps out. It got mm -hmm. me my first job, which got me my subsequent jobs. And now at my fourth or fifth job now, <laughs> I'm like, I still connect with people who went to UVA and that opens doors. All right. So before we wrap up here, I want to spill a lot of tea because I know we talk about a lot of educational stuff on this channel, but obviously life's more than just education. So entertain us a little. What's some <laughs> bad stuff that happens as a data scientist? Yeah, I've dealt with being let go, being fired, quitting, because the reality of working in tech is that it can be really intense, especially at startups where you're wearing so many different hats. Maybe the business doesn't do well and the company has to let you go. And sometimes that could lead to burnout. Um, that has absolutely happened to me. Mm -hmm. Or you could not have enough work because your business is not getting the customers that it needs because it's an early stage startup. Yeah. And then you suddenly get let go. Like I was at my last job. It was just a, a business transaction that that happened, but it was because our company did not find its fit in a market that was really saturated with data products. Mm -hmm. And so my advice for anybody is like really suss out that product market fit at any company that you're working at, because if you're at a company just for the title, just for the pay, but the company like doesn't have its fit in the market, like you're going to lose that job no mm. matter how well you do. So how do you identify that for you? Doing a lot of like talking to people who are not just your interviewers during that interview process and talking to also to ex employees at the company. Mm -hmm. They are such a good source of information. They're going to be so honest. They have mm -hmm. no incentive to like tell you anything but the truth, right? Yeah. I understand like when you are about to get a new job, you could be really excited and you don't really want to hear the negatives, but you probably should hear mm -hmm. both sides. But yeah, I, I did not do that at my last job. Mm -hmm. And I recently had somebody reach out to me and they were about to join my last company. And I was like, look, don't this, do that. <laughs> this is what you need to know. And he yeah. was like, Oh, I didn't know that. And I was like, this, that's what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. Also, I think that's really good advice. And I think overall, this was very valuable for everyone who's interested in data science. Thank you, Megan, for joining us on today's video. And I'll catch you guys next time.